we've established that the game you know, has a tight focus that hopefully people will have seen online and, and perhaps if they're watching this when the games come out they'll be aware that the game is focused on, on the, certainly the first release on quite a tight area of Middle Earth. How did you go about choosing that area? Ah, um, well, I think that I just looked at where the Hobbit mm, stopped in mm -hmm. its telling and where uh, the Lord of the Rings began, and I thought about um, if we were going to fill the blank space that is left between the two books, which was the place that was more suited for it, and I thought it was Wilderland, because um, it, the way The Hobbit ends, uh, it really uh, ends on a positive note, like the world is opening again its boundaries and, uh, and everyone can look to uh, a new spring of joy, I think that's how King uses <laughs> words like that. Uh, even if it's not a future that really uh, is going to happen, because mm -hmm. everybody knows that, I mean, Probably the optimism lasted just for a few years, and then the darkening of, of, of Middle Earth started again. Um, it's, it seems that the, the end of The Hobbit marks um, a moment where every culture described by, by Tolkien as living in the, in the northwestern part of Middle Earth uh, is really looking around and, and see that there are other peoples and, and other uh, folks actually uh, probably willing to fight for the same on the same side uh, against the coming threat. So um, I thought that putting the, the players, uh, the player characters on uh, on that setting could be a good idea because it could, uh, in some ways, make them part of the making of the Lord of the Rings. Uh, they get the chance to uh, to see the gears starting to move uh, towards that conclusion of the third age is going to be the world ring. I think that many people that comes to to a Lord of the Rings RPG, uh, if they look it on the negative side, they can wonder how you can actually play in a game where all the characters, the important characters, makes all the important deeds that are going to shape Middle Earth. And then the War of the Ring lasts approximately one year, so it, that's not a long time to, to be actually able to play in. And so we thought that bringing back the clock to, to 70, approximately 70 years before, but in a time that everybody is familiar with, because of course it's the setting for The Hobbit, could give us every, every uh, element we, we needed to build a successful setting for the game without thinking about setting it uh, 300 years before or, uh, or in a possible fourth age or something like that. So. I think, and, and then there's also that thing that the eye of the, uh, uh, of the reader uh, that was set on Wilderland, Wilderland at the end of The Hobbit then moves completely away when you read The Lord of the Rings because it deals with different places and, and only hints at what, hap what is happening during The World of the Ring in, in, uh, in Mirkwood and the surrounding areas. So you are left with just enough material to think of what could plausibly mm, happen there, and a lot of freedom to do that with your own characters in, uh, in, in, the in, in a prominent position as the heroes of the age in a different place. I think, and then of course that's a bit of a controversial position because it's I mean, uh, everybody wants to play a Rohanian right from the start, or a, or a Gondorian. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's not going to go down well with with a few with a few possible buyers for the game, because they're not going to find writers of Rohan in there. Nah, not and not Gondorians. But uh, I think that if they uh, get into into uh, our own perspective they will see why uh, it was impossible for us to uh, give you the chance of 
having a fellowship composed of a writer of Rowan and a Gondorian knight and, and a hobbit, and all and the three of them are dining in a in a Lake Town tavern uh, five years after the the, the Hobbit, uh, because if you read the books, uh, it seems that Rohan doesn't even exist doesn't doesn't even exist uh, at the time because nobody speaks about it. So. So I hope that um, um, players will give us the benefit of the doubt and, and try try it out and see that uh, there's a huge panorama to be to be explored, uh, yeah, really with um, as protagonists, not as you know people nobody ever heard about because they're not mentioned in the books. Because sure. there's there are many places where they can uh, commit their world shaking deeds <laughs> without I mean without uh, interfering with uh, with the main character for the books. Even of course, but that's a long story. I mean, you will get the chance to to cross your path with the uh, with with the main characters. Because of course that's the same place. It's a big place, but it's a small place at the same time. So <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a very there's a lot of contradictions, aren't there, within Middle Earth and within players, Middle Earth gamers, because because some people almost want to be the Fellowship or play in a Fellowship that's composed of you know very similar characters because that's what they feel the Middle Earth is about. And then you've got other people that just don't want to have anything to do with that and they want to adventure in the world, but maybe not be tied to kind of the plot, so, you know, it's, it's a tricky one, isn't it? It's a tricky balance. You know? Yeah, I think that some of the things that in some ways play against us are the precedents set by, by other games, mm -hmm. because uh, even if they were both very good on their own grounds, Middle Earth, the Middle Earth role-playing game by Aaron Crown and the Decipher's game, the Lord of the Rings RPG by Decipher, were very different beasts than, than our game. Uh, I never actually had the idea of trying to mimic any of the two because it's it's not simply because I wanted to do something different. Uh, I simply felt uh, that we needed to do something different to be uh, as faithful to the sources as possible. I mean, as everybody that played the Middle Earth RPG knows that it was terrific as it was huge. You could play anything, anywhere, at any time. Uh, but of course, probably the end, the, I mean, there were many possibilities to end up playing something quite different from Middle Earth, mm -hmm. uh, especially because the system didn't really fit uh, the setting, especially magic. And, and the Decipher's game, I think, uh, it had very good chances, but maybe died too early. I mean, they were they didn't have too many things out to to really support it. And in my opinion, it also tackled the the, the sources from that perspective, uh, from that outside perspective of really showing everything that's there. Uh, from you know, like outside of the atmosphere, and saying <laughs> that's everything that's in there in this world, and you can pick anything you want. Mm. That's a very good thing for many players. For me, I don't know. For me, for for me, it's not. I mean, I always prefer games that give me an arrow, uh, an arrow uh, number of choices. If those choices are um, are made for the sake of the setting. So, I mean, uh, like, like, again, like King Garth or Pendragon, I mean, nobody uh, complains about, I mean, just a few people complains about the fact that you can just play Salisbury Knights, mm -hmm. Salisbury Knights outside of the, of the, of the book. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know how many players actually played Saracens uh, or or magicians in in even in even in the different editions you got the chance to do that if you really want to be uh, adherent to Thomas Mallory in particular you just play the narrow focus mm -hmm. I mean I played it for 
20 years. <laughs> <laughs> not, a, not a magician among our own, but it's, I mean, that's different tastes. And then again, we, and not just, just to finish, I mean, and then again, uh, we already had Middle Earth RPG, we already had the Decipher's game, so I think yeah, there sure. is room for another take. <laughs> <laughs> this has been an interesting commentary online. A couple of times it's come up from a couple of quite prolific posters on the issue that they're concerned that it won't be enough to get them away from playing Merp. But I don't think anybody wants them to stop playing Merp. Do you know what I mean? If that ticks your boxes, if that makes your game work, play it. <laughs> you know, play that. Yeah. Yeah, one, of the things that, one of the things that really make RPG not really a viable uh, economical product it's exactly that. You can play a game that is uh, 50 years old <laughs> today without any problems. You just need the book and you play it. I mean, at 50 because it's too much. But <laughs> I mean, you can play. I mean, now look at the retro clones of, of first edition of D&D. You can, you can play with those and have fun. Uh, so that's bad for the designers and publishers because you don't need anything else but uh, the very first RPG you ever bought. But if you want to to to, to experience a different take on a, on a beloved uh, setting, then you can try and see if it's uh, if it goes according to your own tastes. <laughs>